hello everyone welcome back in this lesson we will look at push buttons in interscader let's get started all right so before we start kindly show me love and then press on the like button also if you've not registered i will urge you to press on the subscribe button and also on the notification bell so that you always be notified whenever i upload new videos okay in the previous tutorial we had a look at uh, analog input output we've also looked at uh, data input output and we can see that with the data the examples that we gave we used latching switches switches that is perma either on or is off and it lasts in that position in this part we will look at momentary switches basically push buttons so let's go to the wizard and then bring some push buttons okay so we go to push buttons we have various types we have the set reset display type we have the button okay so we select this momentary one and then we click on ok to select it we place it on the workspace right so to demonstrate we'll go back to we we'll go back to the wizard and then select a lamp let's go to light and then we can pick any of the lights okay we click ok and then place it on the workspace all right the next thing to do we already know we need to assign tags to them we can double click and then assign specific tag we can create new tags so this can be my b1 as button one and then ask me to define i go to ok and the type we know this is a digital switch so we use memory discrete i click on save to save okay i can close it and then click ok i'm done i need to assign the same tag name to the lamp so b1 click ok Alright, so this is a momentary switch, which implies that whenever I click on this switch, it will remain on when I release it, it's supposed to go off. Okay, so we can see that this switch can be set. So we can double click on it to go into the property. And we can see that we have an action. You can either choose uh, direct or reverse. And then we have the color field. At the moment, uh, red represents off and then on is green okay and then we have the key equivalent all right so we will go back there and then we'll go to runtime to see the first test okay so we have the runtime here when i click on the start we can see that the lamp is on and it remains on when i click on it again it then becomes more or less like a momentary switch when I click, it comes on. When I release, it goes off. Okay. So basically, this is representing or acting like a momentary switch that comes on and remain in that particular state. So you press, it goes off, and immediately you release, it comes back on. Okay. Let's go back to the development page. So this is one set of switch that we can use. That is a, a momentary button that can be used depending on the application that you want to use it for now we go back to the wizard and pick another form of uh, button okay this time we'll move down and pick the run panel button and then click on ok so you can see this switch looks similar to this but now let's go to this switch property and then you can see that it has a lot more property than the very first one that we are making use of you can see here it's having action under the action you can do set you can do reset you can do toggle okay so what is this set you realize that with the first one because it's a momentary one whenever i press it comes on and remains on when you press again it goes off and when you release it comes back on again if your application is such that you want to single single press for it to be on and then you need another push button for it to be pressed before it goes off then you can use this set this type of switch where you can either set 
or do the reset let's look at a typical example to understand this so i'll change this to our tag that we just created b1 and i click on ok so i will delete this copy again and then position here i have two of them and then it's already assigned to the lamp so if i go to the first push button i will set it as set in the action parts and i click on ok when i come to the second one i will set it at reset so in this case then it will act like a flip-flop that you can either set or reset so i click on ok and then when i go to runtime we can see that i can use this to set it's already set so it's on and then i can reset so i can set and then reset so dep depending on your application you can either use the set reset so that you can use two push buttons to control the lamp okay this is the first application we'll go back again and then we'll look at the other one so i go back here you see that we're having a different option toggle toggle simply means that in an application where you want to use only one button to do the control then you can choose the toggle and then you'll be toggling between two states it's either when you press it goes to logic zero and when you press again it goes back to logic one so let's look at that quickly save i can delete this very one and then let me confirm already toggle selected and then i can go to the runtime okay so with this when i click it comes on when i click it goes back off so this is the toggle function okay i'll go back off there's another interesting function within interscader which is the key equivalent which implies that let's say for instance if you want to use your key a special key stroke on your keyboard to do the control you can do just that so i can select key equivalent and then i can go to key and then i can choose any key that i want to use for the control so let's say for instance with this i want to use key b so i select b and then i can go say okay and then we can go runtime to check how it functions so without using the mouse to do the clicking i will use key b to control the lamp so i click on b and we can see the light comes on and if i click on b again it goes back off so with this functionality you'll be able to assign key functions to it to control if you don't want to use only a single key to do the control you can also add control let's say b or shift b so if i select control b then which means i'll be able to use control b to do the controls so let me click ok and then have a look at that okay so now let me press b and you see that nothing happens but if i press ctrl b then the lamp comes on if i press ctrl b again the lamp go back off perfect so this is a brief explanation of how to apply push buttons we will look at the final example okay so i go back to buttons and then this time i can pick this button with a, a test And double click on it and then give it a new tag i can say b2 say okay okay the memory is already selected so i click on save and then i can close and then click on okay perfect i can copy this lamp and then assign b2 to read okay good so we can see that this particular button is having an indicator that can also tell us the states of the button and then we can see that when we double click you can either change the colors to suit your purpose you can either also use the label left or right and then you can give the label description so if it's supposed to let's say control a pump i can just say pump and then that can be the label for the switch so i can go to runtime and then it's now red which means off if i press it comes back on 
and I can see an indication on the push button as well okay so I would like you to practice on the remaining ones in the next tutorial we will look at how to get symbols from the symbol factory okay so see you in the next tutorial bye bye